Um, good evening. I'd like to uh, welcome you all to the Planning Board regular meeting for Thursday, January 21st, 2021. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America, America and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, honor God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I will start. To, is um, do we have nobody else on Zoom for the meeting? Nope. All right. So the board members present tonight, I have Mike LaRue. To my right, I've got Jerry Graybill to my left. We've got our code enforcement officer, Mrs. Jennifer McCabe on Zoom and our town planner, basically James Bellissimo here in, um, in the room. Tonight, um, we are going to hope that we will get your thoughts and prayers for our chairman, Dave Andreessen. He had a uh, pretty serious accident two weeks ago and has been in ICU and is in very critical condition right now. So um, please keep him in your thoughts. He's served here for eight years on this board. He's the only reason that I'm on this board. And um, you know he certainly has given an awful lot of himself to this town. James? Yeah, um, thoughts with Maggie and Dave. Dave is an incredible asset to the town and um, just wish him the absolute best. Um, so with um, the turning of the year, um, it's 2021. And uh, what we do is we reelect the chair and vice chair. I think the board is ready to elect the chair. So um, if you guys wanna volunteer somebody, you can make a motion to um, I make a motion to make uh, Nicole Fecto the chair. I'll second that motion. Thanks, guys. All in favor? <laughs> Can I vote for myself? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. And if you want to, we can hold off on a vice chair if, if you want to do that. No, I, I, I can do it. All right, cool. I would, yeah, I would like to motion, uh, make a motion for Mike LaRue for vice chair for the 2021 year. Second that motion. Thank you, Jerry. Thank All you. in favor? Cool. And so it is. Congrats. Thank you. It's an honor to serve on this board. And I'm not going to do as good of a job as Dave did. <laughs> he runs a damn good meeting. Um, okay, so uh, that brings us to our first public comment session. The public comment session is open to residents of Berwick. Please come to the podium if you have a public comment and state your name and address. We do have a few members of the public with us tonight. So, Hello, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Happy New Year. Um, I'm Jody Rogers. Um, I own 420 Portland Street. It currently is a medical uh, marijuana cultivation facility on that premise. It's in an airline hangar that's been there since the early 90s. And um, I'm here tonight because I had submitted um, a packet for conditional use to expand I don't know if you folks are familiar with the building, but in addition to the 100 by 100 hangar, there is a 40 by 40 building in the front of it that's connected. And it was always our intention to use that for retail. And um, we submitted all of our conditional use package to James back in, I think it was June or so. And we were looking to um, add the retail and some production and um, expand into adult use. And when we submitted the whole package and we had engineering and all of that, we reset the wetlands barriers and stuff. James discovered that we're actually in the limited residential shoreland protection area. Oh, what a so that was shocking. <laughs> My tax card says RCI. I knew there was wetlands, of course, but um, I was very surprised to find out that it was much more limited than that. So at this point in time, um, there's nothing I can do with that property except expand into some limited residential use, which I don't think is necessarily appropriate or ideal. So what I wanted to do was just um, to give you um, some of the current um, wetlands, well, the zoning and wetlands maps. So 
there are, are two um, RCI areas in town. Oh, if you just want to wait until you get to the microphone, just in case we do tend to have quite an audience okay. at home. So if you look at the shoreland, the wetlands map, you'll see um, I've highlighted there, there's two areas that are uh, shoreland limited uh, residential areas at the, at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the upper one is around the sewer district area and the lower one, the longer finger there incorporates basically my whole lot. So um, if you look at the other map there, you'll see the zoning is RCI all along there, that's Route 4 corridor, as well as where the sewer district is in the other um, uh, shoreland limited residential. So uh, basically what I would like the town to consider is, um, I, it's, it's twofold. Number one, I think, that this area is more appropriate to be in the shoreland commercial industrial rather than limited residential. Um, I don't think the back part of my lot is necessarily appropriate for, for a residential, plus it would mean roads in by the town and things of that nature. And I'm not sure even from a um, environmental standpoint that it would be more beneficial, certainly not from a tax standpoint for the town. Um, so I'll actually give you Kind of so, um, and, and maybe you folks have a better way of approaching this, but um, I, I didn't know if it was possible to take just the Route 4 corridor and change it to um, shoreland, commercial, industrial, or whether you felt it was best to be all inclusive of the two areas that are in question for shoreland. And the second part of that was, is if you look at the land use um, chart for the town, the, the land uses that are in the commercial industrial shoreland pretty much mimic the residential. Um, and I think that's another potential misalignment. It seems to me that, I mean, this, these two fingers that you see that are along Route 4 here that kind of swing up, um, those are, those flank the dog park in Berwick right now on both sides. And I mean, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for this to be uh, either limited residential or under the same use guidelines as the residential areas. So of course it's in my best interest to expand that a little bit, whether you would, would consider doing it for marijuana use or for all uses that are in RCI. But as I said, this whole strip here, I think is pretty much what, you know, what belongs there is, is RCI uses and not residential uses. So it's kind of twofold, it's a little complicated. James may have a better idea of an approach but um, I do know that I've read through the ordinance and it certainly seems like all of the shoreland um, criteria for expanding or developing or, or what's, whatever the case may be are very protective. And I don't think there's gonna be any uh, safety or reckless um, use allowed on that property, no matter which way it goes. So from an environmental standpoint, I don't think it makes a lot of difference. It's more from a zoning and use sure. standpoint. And when you came, you because you came before and didn't we have we had an issue with distancing? Yes. With yours. Yes. And do you, you still have that issue? No, we're good on that. Okay, we're good on distancing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and everything that we had proposed in our conditional use application was set off even further from the wetlands. Um, if you're not familiar with the area, the the actual Lover's Brook there is at least 30 feet lower than our, our property is extremely dry, but everything, everything we do there, we can certainly comply with um, the guidelines that you have for shoreland. And I'm not sure if the state has to approve any change of use or uh, whatnot in a shoreland that may be a hurdle of this. I don't right, know whether right. that gets done before it goes to town yeah. vote. Or... Yeah, they very well may. That's that's definitely a that's definitely a James question when we get into rezoning things. So, um, it just seems like it it got. Did you? There you go. Well, oh, you've been involved with that already. Well, well kind of what we had down at Eleven Pond. You, you have to go through 
Oh, Jerry, put, would you put your microphone on just so, just so we make sure we hear you? No. Yeah, I think I think if we did some, I mean, I, I like where you're going with the SCI part. It would have to be some, and I'll tell you why. I mean, I think one of the things I rest on is there's a lot supporting commercial development along the, the rural commercial industrial zone. Say there is a way forward and I'll certainly, if we think it's a, a good idea to look at how to, how to do it. I mean, I think going, cause you're talking about, I'm not sure if the, with the shoreland stuff if that's mandated, but I, it's an attorney question. I'll look into it. But when the, but what Jerry's talking about is say this does go through where you see a way through, you would be subject to pretty extensive DEP. DEP. Oh yeah. 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 I would, I would right. expect that. Yes. Right. At the very least a permit by rule. I'm not and sure. That we would, <laughs> I mean, we the DEP talked about extraction. We want mm -hmm. high detail in extraction. Um, I mean, I thought about if, if it can revert to the base layer mm -hmm. for the use, that's one way through, but those are just considerations. There's also another question on if your application still is standing, right? Are you, are you past the cap? And then we have to look at it addressing your cap, which right. I'm not going to say that we're going to meet with our select board yeah. to do a workshop to talk about the cap and where we're at with all, all, all of that. Well, yeah, I know agreement with the selectmen is that we would meet with them period or yearly, right? To review that. And um, we've got a couple of zoning changes that have been requested. So we definitely have to talk to selectmen about that as well. Well, I, I know when I came before you before, the guidance that I received was that if I got my application in right. prior to um, the cutoff, that right. it would be considered in yeah, in time yeah. and that I haven't really gotten a ruling from the town. Right, or, I mean, right. So I Understand, think I'm still in yeah. under the, the cutoff, but uh, yeah. I would lean towards yes. I'll check with our attorney because Sure. Your application is kind of in the pending review, right? It's been in a holding pattern, but um, I think, I mean, I think you did a lot of due diligence looking into this. And it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense not to have residential, limited residential out there. I mean, that's what we're talking about with uh, when um, our next public comment comes up, <laughs> Mr. Amatucci. I mean, that's, you know, it's everybody's leaning the same way. <laughs> Okay, so I'll great. Yeah, so we'll we'll review this with the selectman and with James and, and have the attorney look at it. But awesome. thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks day. for your time, guys. Yeah. Anybody else for public comment? I I think I can handle. Okay, you got this? James All right. Has. Perfect. <laughs> so should I move on to approval of minutes then? Yes. You can tell I'm not Dave Andreessen. Um, moving on to approval of minutes. <laughs> Has everybody had a chance to look at them? I know James got them out super late today <laughs> Sorry about before that. the meeting. I had a chance to review them, but did yeah, you guys? I've reviewed them. Okay, great. Any questions or changes? I don't think so. Nope. So I just need a motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes for January 7, 2021. And you know, before we do anything else, I want to recognize Jerry as a voting member. I did not do that, so... Okay. I'll second the motion. Awesome. All in favor? Great. Approved as written. Good job, James. So infrequent that happens. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little. It was a little dig. All right, moving on to new business. So tonight we're going to talk about land use ordinance amendments um, for the June 2021 vote since Every one of our land use ordinance amendments got voted down uh, for this month's vote. Apparently, uh, there's some big problems in the town with it. So we are going to redo these and invite everybody to come to the public hearing to discuss if anybody has any questions, concerns, or comments about them. But James, I'll let you go ahead with sure. this. Yeah, so on that note, um, I think there's only a couple of things that show back up from the last vote. Okay. Uh, Great Falls, um, they, they, who is subject to the village overlay district, they're willing to change their site plan to fit in. Um, 
So these changes, I mean, a lot of these are, are, are simply cosmetic. Um, we're really trying to make our ordinance more accessible to the general public. Um, and that's getting rid of just language that's confusing, but also Jen and I sometimes frontage comes up a lot yeah. and, and access to lots. It's, it's, it comes up a few times a month. So number one, you can see what I did. I put in the revisions with the edits, which shows like if it's Let me bold, interrupt real quick. Yeah, sure. It's come up twice today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think I think this will help us. Uh, so anything in highlight, bold and red, that's added language. Anything uh, with a cross through it is is being deleted. And what's being deleted? is um so within a definition is another definition uh -huh. and that's a no-no um so instead of the definition within a definition that's that's struck out and then it's just referencing section or article 7.21 so you go from all of this to to this which is a pretty succinct and it's not i mean it's not Oh, the only thing is it's, it's changing is that it's just clarifying an inconsistency. Okay. Because what that says is it, it defines legal access to the lot as a way approved by the town, um, something that's shown in a subdivision plan or something that's uh, deemed adequate by planning board. Mm -hmm. But on 7.21 and the way that the town has been operating for as long as I'm aware of mm -hmm. is the access to lot and dwelling unit standards. So being able to bring in a deeded right of way to get frontage off a deeded right of way. Right. Right, I mean, that's, we've always done that. That's what it means. That's what it is. And, and that's where people get confused is with the deeded right of way, yeah. correct? Yeah. So in this, this table puts, puts, I think it summarizes it in a small table, what's put into words. Mm -hmm. Um, it also clarifies um, in our ordinance, it says drainage ditches and culverts shall be installed at all appropriate points. Uh, the addition of the language, I actually have to highlight and bold that because it is additional language. Is okay. that as determined by the town of Berwick or third party engineer hired by the town at the applicant's expense and access for, to lots refers to any streets, roads, or right of ways utilized to access this lot. One thing to clean up is people will put in um, um, a, a right of way that becomes a street, and then that's that's dirt, and then putting off a right of way off that right of way. Right. So that and is thinking yeah. that starts the three all over again. Yeah, it's like, you can't do that. That's, right. No, you're so using. It, is there a way to clarify that within the ordinance? That's what this. That's what. This, okay, so that is yeah. okay. Yeah, which that's the way we interpreted it. Yes. Because if you're using a dirt right of way, you're you're using the dirt right of way. And the reason why we have that, A, it's a good way to control growth in the rural areas, mm -hmm. but really it's about a safety issue with road maintenance and a road becoming degraded and it becomes a safety issue for access. Right, and that's why we wouldn't want a, a right of way off of a right of way because yeah, the fire trucks- Yeah, you circumvent it for forever. Exactly. And then um, all of this stuff that's being deleted here is all in reference to a town discontinued road, mm -hmm. lot being created prior to 1987 on a town discontinued road, allowing them, you can, you're allowed to build on that road, but you can get an additional lot if you deed it to a child. And it has all these stipulations mm -hmm. that are just redundant from the already the standards that are already specified in 7.21. Okay. So there's a whole page of stuff that's just. I looked through that today. I was like, what? And it's just confused. It just confused. It's confused me before where. So do we have discontinued roads with lots like this on them? On, what roads are we talking about? Pigtail. Okay. Is this basically about pigtail? No, it's just. Okay. But is, are there any others? Town discontinued roads. Um, yeah. I think love. I think love. love I Lovers think love broke broke. or whatever it is. Um, Loves discontinued roads. Can you think of any, Jen? King is King Lane. No, King Lane is not a. Was never that was never a road, really, no. right? Jen, do you have any? 
down discontinued roads. I mean, is those, Blackmore Road the same? No, I think Blackmore was always private, but it is. Um, None off the top of my head right now. Up then. in Lane, maybe one. Okay. That one's a that one's a, a complex one. <laughs> it was Randall Road at one point. Okay. And then when they took the bridge down, it became Coffin Lane. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I just, that's all I wanted so I could look at this like harder. Yeah. Um, but it does, so crossing that out doesn't affect that part. Right. It only affects, and it, this doesn't even affect it because I just, I added that, like it, it still effectively, you can still have a second dwelling unit if you give it to a kid. Right. It just doesn't, doesn't, reiterate these points that are already done. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering, is the, having the second unit, like are, is, are they still have to follow our road standards that we have? Yeah, they okay. have to, you can get, so you can build, do one, and then you get an additional one, but you have to build it to a two dwelling unit standard. Okay. So the, whatever the 15 foot yeah with 15 yeah 15 okay. feet wide 15 okay. inches of bank and just because it's a discontinued road doesn't mean it's a it's a it's a gravel driveway it's a just a basically net it's a discontinued road that is now a private road privately owned privately maintained it's not an unmaintained road right okay well it's not it's not maintained by the it's not maintained by the town but it's maintained by, by somebody by some association of yep. some sort what's the road off of um school street there where that the house fire was a couple of years ago that the it's like the worst road in Berwick Jen must know Jewel Lane Jewel Lane is that just just a private road that was never a town main private yeah. yeah there's such few instances and pretty soon okay. every lot that could have been built on it will be built will upon. be built so and then provision will be okay irrelevant pretty soon but it came into I mean it came into play um this past year year and a half okay marijuana um so marijuana it's it's putting in the um rci with front end drawn not in four it's clarifying that establishments under the same ownership on non-contiguous lots yeah they can't leapfrog okay so they apply so like if they're across the street from from room four, yeah, you can't have two of the same ownerships. Okay, and then exempting. We made that. Is that a word, Jerry? Do we have a accept, <laughs> accepting? Right, accepting was the word. Exempting uh, yep. marijuana testing facilities right. from the thousand foot requirement, and also exempt exempting it from the testing limit. It's a pretty low intensive use and. Right it would fit out there number four just striking person person's already defined early on i'm trying to get our land use ordinance thinner <laughs> why would you want to do that so person is defined in here yeah person's defined at the beginning okay somewhere. on page 19 under definitions so where are we striking it within the definitions part but it's it's defined okay. it's defined in another spot spot at the beginning where? Like if it's not under person. Let's see. Under individual? No, it's not in the definition section. Okay. Uh, let me get that. I mean, I guess we don't. Person. Uh, page 22. All right, so we have two definitions. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> um, I'm not. I I have it on page 19 in mine, but I think I might just have an older version. Or you know, I I copy and paste things in here. So, so we're striking it from that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, clarifying under agriculture. Any well, I like that. And then the woodscape buffer. Right. Shall be enclosed by a screen at least six feet in height. Yeah. And that's that's stuff that should be taken care of in, in 
through subdivision review anyways. Right. Number seven. So within the village overlay district, we specified uh, a specific type of street light. Mm -hmm. I just think that's a little over overboard at this point. Okay. <laughs> I just think that you just provide the provision that it has to, it either needs to complement the lighting out here yeah. at town hall or next to the bridge. It's, uh, it was Paul that wanted, it was Paul that really pushed for it because he wanted it to, you know, you come yeah. over the bridge because they spent so much time and money, you know, yeah. on Summer's Worth and the bridge that he wanted it to all look alike. Um, so how are we making sure that it complements that so that Paul Bovere doesn't call me tomorrow? Um, I mean, yeah, no, I, like I, com I, compliments, maybe we could give a couple of examples since there's an, since we had an example in our ordinance already. We might, we could put it, we could say it's a, like a, I don't know if we want to play if it's a suggested fixture. Okay. Cause we do, maybe we do leave it in there, make it oh, like if they. I don't see a problem with it just because we worked so hard on that, that downtown ordinance, unless these, these lights are like so expensive and it's an actual developer that's saying, no, no we don't want to do this. I found the Walmart, like, like. Uh -huh. dollar value version of yeah. right. the lights across the bridge that look the same that look very similar yeah. that are affordable okay mm -hmm. and those are the lights that we're going to use too so right. um maybe i'll just i'll talk with great falls construction a little bit about okay what they're thinking and then um maybe we, i'll take it out for now because we can always put it back in, in yeah november or something yeah. i just wouldn't yeah i mean or take it out in November, I mean. Or, yeah, right, take it out, yeah. That's fine. I was going back and forth on that one. Okay. Strike it. Okay. Strike the strike. <laughs> the double negative. All right. Eight is just the, uh, from. Sawmill remember, from um, yeah. the rights, yeah. Yeah, it's just. Yep. It's an arbitrary number. 50 is still an arbitrary number, but okay. it's still. So number nine yeah. is the, the maximum building footprint, which was something that we talked about and we talked about. And yeah, so with the max footprint, what was in the last one was yeah. just striking it all together, not right. having a max building footprint. Oh, okay, footprint. okay, okay. I mean, I think putting a max building footprint yeah. there um, or we could just leave it the way it is. I think the the pro of just allowing them to do 25,000 square feet, they're not gonna have to, for the their larger buildings, right. they're, not gonna, they're not gonna have to have two separate buildings. Right. All it's going to do is going to add costs to the to their development. Oh yeah. It's not going to it's not going to drastically change the density or the square footage. It's just going to But we did I mean we did um put it in for a reason. We put it in so that we wouldn't have giant massive buildings downtown cuz nobody wants giant massive buildings downtown. So and I think that when we did that the purpose was so that we didn't have big, big buildings. Me, so what if we did something with like a, um, or what if we proposed a, a breakup of a facade, like the facade, you know, like you can have a 25,000 square foot building, but it has to look like, I don't know, five, 5,000 square foot buildings, you know, whatever, but um, because we want it to look congruent with the, with the New England downtown, that's the purpose. Could you Jerry? put wording in here to say 25,000 square feet or as approved by so, you know, you, they have to submit something yeah. and get it approved if they want to go bigger and show why mm. it makes sense to do that. In other right. words, there has to be a reason. Yeah. And the yeah, re and re reason can't be just because I want it bigger. Right. Or because it's cheaper. Because you yeah. can't go above 25,000 right. unless there's some, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean the density is the density. You can, I mean, the, we have we have you you can have maximum density over there. So I know it's not going to change the density, and maybe the townspeople don't know it's not going to change the density. But our my concern it our just con change the looks. Yeah, our concern yeah. is for the visual appeal of it. Yeah, right. And do we have other things? I know I haven't looked at that part of our ordinance in a while, but I know we put other things in there to also make sure that we got that um, yeah. New England appealing feel. So um, I don't know. I'm I'm fine with this. I would like to see something about maybe having it look look like a broken up facade, though. Sure, we have things like uh, you can't have a blank wall for more than so many feet. Okay, That's one thing. Yep. The um, we have design guidelines. 
Yeah. And they, they have to submit building materials and facades and elevations. Yep. And there is a provision in there that the planning board has to find the submission materials consistent with the design guidelines. And the design guidelines have embedded, we, we submitted pictures of our like favorite yeah, New England. Yeah. <laughs> Freeport. How many times and, do we talk about Freeport <laughs> <laughs> yeah. during those months? Oh, yeah. So that should help. I, you know what? I can also reach out to Mike Lassell. Okay. That would be, yeah. that, I, that would be really good. I just, I would hate to see, um, you know, we're volunteers here. We've been working on this stuff for a long time. Um, I'd hate to see another six months worth of our work be shot down because somebody doesn't like this one little um, change. True. Yeah, and, and, that's, and there is a, I mean, we do have a purpose for it, so. Yeah, true. And the Great Falls has been willing to amend their site plan and they're, they're moving full steam ahead um, so they don't, they're not waiting for any amendments. They don't need any, any amendments. Right. Yeah. Hey, cruising right along. Food sovereignty. I said it right. Yes. Good job. So this one, we borrowed it from Lebanon and took out some of the flowery language. And I'll go I'll straight, uh, cut to the chase. The, um, what happens is we adopt this and the producers and processors of local food intended for direct pr producer to consumer transaction in the town of Berwick shall be exempt from state licensure and inspection. The state of Maine shall not enforce those state food laws, rules, regulations with respect to direct producer to consumer transactions. So this um, does apply to milk. It does not apply to meat or poultry. Okay. I think 70 towns and cities in Maine have adopted this and our attorney is uh, giving it a once over to make sure that everything in there is, is in there. Uh, this, this has been proposed to me several times by local farmers and interested members of the, of the public. And I told them, I kept telling them, I didn't think we needed it until I'm kind of uh, dense sometimes, but uh, <laughs> they finally, I finally understood it. It's about the licensing part. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But there's still, sometimes they're still going to be subject to some zoning depending on the scale of what they're doing, but we're generally very, or we're trying to be very ag friendly and to be more ag friendly going into the future. And they would still, I mean, and this is a state thing. So they, this is regulated by the yeah, state. Yeah, this, this is actually something that is a state statute that is an opt-in thing. Mm -hmm. So it's something that was vetted through the main legislature. Okay. Questions? Questions from the board? And would you like to talk about, um... oh yeah, look at that. And before I forget, um, this will be posted online. We'll have a, a public, a notice public hearing mm -hmm. for February 4th, I believe. Okay. And from that, from that date, we'll have the February, the third week in February will be the last time to make any final changes and it's on to the select board process from there. So what you're saying is the public has a variety of opportunities to come and talk about this. So yes. they can come during the public hearing for the land use ordinance amendments. They could also go when it goes before the select board because they have their own public hearing, don't they, for um, what they put forward. So there's uh, many opportunities for the public to come and learn more, to discuss it. They can come, you know, whenever, send us emails. We'll, we, we're happy to discuss. And um, we're just volunteers here. Absolutely. And we're gonna work with Jody and look through legal. That would be the only, one of the only things I could see that might be added to the list to look, look through it. But you can see this is how the process is. Um, a lot of our ordinance amendments are citizen initiated um, and we put it through the process um, and we try to we vet everything and mm -hmm. uh, consult with legal and, and consultants. I mean, it goes, yeah, it goes through us. I mean, we're just like, hey, this, we think this is a good idea. The selectmen who are our town elders who are voted into position um, and it goes through legal. It's not just stuff that we just come up with to make people happy. 
it's definitely vetted. Yep. Um, yep. And do you want to talk about this last Absolutely. item? So what I have here is a zoning request and let's see, can I rotate it? Anyways, you don't have to crank your neck. <laughs> so what this is, is um, we have an RCI zone off route four, um, but it also, it also goes into residential areas as we went through with the Pond Road neighborhood where it probably doesn't make sense to have rural commercial industrial uses off from Route 4. So this was submitted from the Pond Road neighborhood and um, I proposed some changes to this for my, full, for my full support. So lot 24 over here is the outlook and I would just propose taking that out, leaving that RCI. And if you come up here, um, 23 and 22, 21, 23A, 20, 19, 3, 19, 1, 92, 18, and, and 17, uh, these are all interior residential uses um, and also include 16B as well. That it makes total sense to me to rezone that to R3, which is rural residential. Um, and I'll just make a note that leaving 16 and 16A and 16-1 will, will remain rural, commercial, industrial. And um, we are going through our comprehensive planning efforts now. And one of the things that we're leaning heavily towards is making our zoning more granular. And by that, I mean having more types of zones in different areas that are more specific to the, the neighborhood, more specific to the area, rather than just having these broad strokes that uh, make up the zones. Right, because if you drive down Route 4 there, it's all, you know, it's commercial, 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 and that's why a lot of our land use ordinance for RCI, we think about that, but yeah. um, failed to think about the beautiful neighborhood that's right behind there, that's still zoned RCI. Um, so that's why, and you're going to run this through with the attorney because we want to make sure that we're not spot zoning, which is not legal um, and other things. So this has to be vetted, but it's something that we identified recently with a long drawn out process. <laughs> it was a nice year we've spent together, all of us, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, and it, and it makes perfect sense. So I'm glad um, Mr. Amatucci and Pond and Perry's Way Road residents that that, that was brought to our, um, brought to us. Yep. And that's, uh, that is, that's all I had. Okay. Anything uh, from you guys? All right. Well, that concludes new business. Uh, we are on to our next public comment session. Speak now or forever hold your peace for two weeks. Anything? Okay. Um, closing the public comment session, informational items. James? There's plenty of volunteer opportunities. Uh, we had five people um, step up to express interest in the planning board. Um, so th those positions are, are full now, but we got Envision Berwick, we got Rec Commission, Historical Society, all kinds of projects, all kinds of ways to get involved. How often does the Historical Society meet? They're pretty inactive at this okay. point. We're right. looking to get I have a 16 year old that would be He'd be great at that. We do he have some it. interest in trying to incubate it back up and yeah. get it up and going. Yeah, that's great. Mr. LaRue, anything from you? No. Vice well, Chairman? Well, good to see you. Gray Bill? Yeah. <laughs> nice to me. be here. Okay. Um, so that would lead to our adjournment. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second it. All right.